That pillow though. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to yet another episode here in the Caffeination Corner. It's not really a corner, but it's a corner. You get my drift. Uh, today we're doing another coffee video, and it's actually kind of a two-part thing. Today we are looking at the Ethiopia Limu Roast from Sump Roasters. Um, these guys are the coffee behind pretty much all the perennial beers. So if you ever had Coffee Abraxas or Sump, um, this is not exactly the exact roast, but this is the roastery that they use to produce their coffee character. Um, I have thus, you're probably asking yourself, why is that bag empty? Well, I received an airscape in a trade. Um, I sent some local beans out, and if you don't know what an airscape is, holds about a pound of coffee, if not more. Inside there, there's a suction seal to keep all the oxygen out. Keeps your coffee smelling fresh, uh, keeps it fresh. And I think it, it preserves it two times as long as you would in a normal storage um, container. So huge shout out to Barry from the Brood Palette for sending this over. One of my favorite things. Plan to get a lot more. <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyways, I brewed the sump. And excuse the dirty glass here. I don't know. Chemexes are really hard to clean. That is one way I'm, one reason I might go away from one. But this is the Sump Ethiopia Limu. I did pull up just a little brief um, note about it. It was, uh, the altitude is 1,500 to 1,800 meters. It was washed, and the region is heirloom. Um, you know, I don't know a lot about that, but they talk a little bit about flavors and things that you're supposed to taste. I just kept it in the Chemex because, first of all, this is a cloudy AF coffee. Um, very, very hazy, if you will. Some coffees are pretty clear, or when they're so dark, you can't even see through them. But I brewed this uh, 27 grams of coffee to 400 grams of water. So a little stronger for some. Um, it seems to be just right for the acidity in this roast that I, I like. Um, but I have to say, this has been one of, this was one of the most hyped roasteries for me getting into coffee is trying these guys so I ordered some bags um, their beans are a lot smaller and I've tried various different grinds and for whatever reason I get a very sludgy like appearance uh, in the Chemex filter and it doesn't filter as well like the coffee turns into mud so um, brewing it is a bitch and it's kind of steered me away from ordering again but you know, this last one, I honestly, um, I tried it with a hand grinder and an electric grinder, very similar tasting results, um, but the electric grinder just made it even worse. So, um, yeah, if you have some coffee, let me know if you've had the same problem. But uh, we'll go ahead and get the nose on the Ethiopia Limu. Um, very, very floral, very honey and like um, brown sugar forward. Strong, strong honey. And I, I did read up on it, and it does say honey, and I'm not just, I mean, this smells like honey. Not like the honey you get from, like, the, the little bear jar, the plastic jar. This is like if you get raw, natural, organic honey um, from, you know, whew, damn, words are escaping me again today. But um, I smell honey, a little bit of a little grapey citrus character, but not as acidic as most Ethiopians. So I'm gonna go ahead and taste it. I am super excited. I brewed this at 198 for blooming. It took almost a minute to fully bloom. And then um, I cranked her up to 202 to finish off the brew. So here we are. That might be the best time, the best way I have ever brewed this coffee. I mean, every time it's been damn good, but I don't know if it's been that good. That is beautiful. That is honey, almost like a, a honeydew melon. This weird, like, fruity cantaloupe thing. Very floral. Um, 
I'm trying to think of some hops that when you drink beer that you get those really floral characters. Kind of like uh, Ithaca Flower Power. If you've had um, uh, older batches or older bottles or older kegs of that beer, it gets very, very floral. Almost like a chamomile in a way. But yeah, honey is predominantly it. They do mention white grape here. I don't know if I could pinpoint white grape, not like a Nelson Sauvin white grape, but there's definitely a grapey character, if you will. Not like uh, a grape soda, but a vinous note. Acidity is low. Body is big. Uh, other Yerga Chefe coffees from that region tend to be so bright and acidic for me that the body thins out. The body does not thin out here at all on this coffee. That's crazy. Um, the acidity is there, but it, it's it's bright, but it's quick. It dissipates quickly. It allows the, all those flavors to really shine. I'm not really getting any chocolate or anything like this. Um, this was $18 for 12 ounces. I believe shipping was free since I ordered enough with a friend. Um, but. That's a lot for coffee, man. Um, damn, but this is one of the best. I, I've been kind of struggling with what my favorite roaster is. Some people have been asking me, what is your favorite roaster? You know, for a while I, I was really jiving on that blue bottle coffee that Barry sent me. Um, this is damn good. This is a bitch to brew though. So I have to subtract points for price and definitely for uh, ease of brewing. And I apologize, I am not mic'd up. Um, hopefully you can hear me okay. The acoustics are a lot better down here, but uh, having, I gotta do something with the mic. This is, this is damn good. This is up there. I still think, bang for my buck, I can buy two bags of Peace Coffee. They're Ethiopian to the one bag from Sump, and for that, I mean, prices goes into a lot of it. I can have double the amount of coffee, um, and if I buy it wholesale in, in bulk, I can have a ton of Ethiopia coffee for like 15 bucks. I can get, you know, it's less than a dollar a pound. It's cheap, so, or not less than a dollar a pound, less than a dollar an ounce. But yeah. Ratings wise, this one's definitely getting an A from me. Um, I would say if you factor in everything, buyability factor, you have to get it shipped to your house. Um, easy to get online, very painless checkout process. Um, yeah, like a 93, 94, this is one of my favorite coffees. I just, seriously, hand grinding these beans takes double the time. I've even, like I said, I've even changed, I've used two different grinders. The beans are a lot smaller. I don't know why that is. If you're a coffee drinker and you know why, I obviously it's growing and it's, uh, uh, you know, where it's grown and amount of water and sun and I get that, but why source them at this point? Uh, I, I don't know, I guess, it, it wow, it was just, it, seriously, I, I should have recorded. Here's a grinding sump coffee because it would literally be a seven to eight minute video before we even brewed. So it's uh, definitely a cup of coffee that takes a lot of work, but you know what guys, some of the best things in life take work. So with that, I will get out of your hair. Thanks so much for joining me for another episode of Caffeination Corner. I will see you again in the next one. Prost.